respiratory system. What do you know about the respiratory system? Who wants to share quickly? Um, Dana, what do you know about the respiratory system? It has to do with our breathing. Nathan, what do you know about the respiratory system? It what? Consists of our lungs. What else? What other organs are a part of our respiratory system? The lungs, our lungs, mouth, nose, and go ahead, um, Amir. What organs are a part of our respiratory system? What body parts are a part? The heart? No. You want to try again? It works in cooperation with the, the heart, works in cooperation with the respiratory system, but it is not a part. It's not directly a part of it. Okay, go ahead, Sky. Our nose, yes. Right. Thank you. All right, so, all right, the respiratory system main's job is to move fresh air into our bodies while removing waste gases, right? Once in the lungs, oxygen is moved into the bloodstream and carried through your body. At each cell in your body, oxygen is exchanged for a waste gas called carbon dioxide. Your bloodstream then carries this waste back, this waste gas back to the lungs where it is removed from the bloodstream and then exhaled. So there's an exchange going on between the carbon dioxide and oxygen. All right. Your lungs and respiratory system automatically perform this vital process called gas exchange. So it's exchanging the good for the bad, right? Which one is the bad? Right. It, it, it plays its role, but it, the excess of it must, comes out, uh, must come out of our bodies. And so when they tell us to keep on the mass 24-7, what is that doing to our bodies? It is putting it into a compromised um, condition, right? The so God say we should let it out, right? In addition to gas exchange, your respiratory system performs other roles important to breathing. These include bringing, I bringing air to the proper body temperature and moisturizing it to the right humidity level. Protecting your body from harmful substances, this is done by coughing, sneezing, filtering, or swallowing them. Also support your sense of smell. Do you know that sneezing is good? Yes, yeah, sneezing is good. It's helping the body to expel that we should not be in it. Coughing is also good. Right? The, 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 the disease that comes with coughing is not good, but the act of coughing is, is good because it's helping the body to, to expel that which is, is um, being, you know, right, blocking the system. Um, I remember when I I had this severe pain, but I thought it was gas, and it go on and off. So I was drinking like ginger tea because I thought it was, and I remember because it was a weekend and my doctor wasn't out, so I said, "Okay, I'm going to go to the doctor Monday." And I could not go to work because I just kept on sneezing, sneezing, I mean, consistently, you know, I was like, what is this? But then when I went to the doctor, I found out that I was having an eptoptic pregnancy. I don't know if that was one of the symptoms, but it is way after... I would have done the ultrasound and stuff that I knew because I never knew that I was even pregnant. So 
So I was having that issue and didn't know. I just, it was just sneezing consistently. It wouldn't stop and I could not tell what it was. So I guess a lot of stuff that is happening to our body, these things tell us, but because we don't know. Right, they are like watchmen. So if you, if you start to sneeze, then you need to start investigating. Why am I sneezing? Am I, am I allergic to something? Am I catching something? So we have to then ask why, right? So these are our little friends. They help us to, to let us know that something is going on in the body. Sky? Did you know um, if you keep your eyes open when you sneeze, your eyes... Um, grow a little bit big and go back in oh the, the bulge yeah okay okay we can experiment that the next time and see right um how many of you feel relieved after you pass gas you ever feel pain in your belly and once you pass gas you feel right so these things are these things are th um the different ways that the body get rid of that which is not good right so the different parts of the, the respiratory system is the nose, right? When God created man, what did he do? He breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. Our mouth, our throat, our voice box, the windpipe, our airways, the lungs, and also the skin. The skin is also a part of our respiratory system. And that is according to the testimonies as well. And also, okay, so going a little bit more, um, in the airways, we have what is called the sinuses. Sinuses are hollow spaces in the bones of your head above and below your eyes. So it's, right, that are connected to your nose by small openings. Sinuses help regulate the temperature and humidity of inhaled Ear. And many persons who have, you know, like asthma, they will have, um, and not only asthma, but you have some persons who, as I said, they, did, they have sinus, they call it sinus, but sinusitis, right? And especially in the morning, they will have this, you know, congestion and, and you know, they make these awful sounds and, you know, it's very irritating to our ears and, and things like that. That is because most of the time because of the temperature, right? And especially when they don't keep their bodies warm enough or the time may be too hot. So different things trigger it as they would say. The nose is the preferred entrance of outside ear into the respiratory system. The hairs lining the nose walls are part of the ear cleaning system. Do you know that the hairs in your nose are there for a reason? Right. They, Right, they keep all things, and so just like the, the ears, the ears is made in a certain way. Even the wax, because sometimes a bug or an ant may go into my ears, and get what, guess what stopped them from going down? The wax, and so we should not dig down into our ears trying to get out all that wax. You know, we clean what is on the surface, but we shouldn't be digging and trying to, it's there also as a protective barrier. As, it, as the body expels it, all right? So the nose in our ears um, helps to, to protect certain things from entering in. Air also enter through the mouth, especially for those who have a mouth breathing habit, whose nasal passages may be temporarily blocked by a cold or during heavy exercise. So we should breathe through our nose, right? Not through our mouth. But in cases where you may be stuffy, then you have to, God provide another avenue for us to breathe through our mouth. But when we constantly breathe through our mouth, um, we're not doing justice to the lungs, right? We must learn to breathe in and even out, in and out through the nose. If we practice that, it does more um, justice to, right? It helps the lungs better. The throat collects incoming air from your nose and mouth, then passes it down to the windpipe, which is also called a trachea, right? And the throat, God, God puts another barrier there. What's the barrier to your throat? What barrier did God put between your mouth and your throat? 
And what, 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 what's one of the things that the, the doctors love to remove? Your, your tonsil, because they are saying it's not so necessary, you can just cut it out. If you're having an issue, just get rid of it. But not so. God did not give us anything to then get rid of it. Right? There are remedies that can correct whatever issues we may be facing. We, may, we must not be so quick to cut out you know, our body parts. Right? The windpipe is the passage leading from your throat to your lungs. Um, the windpipe divides into the two main bronchial tubes, one for each lung, which divides again into each lobe of your lungs. These in turn split further into bronchioles. The lungs and blood vessels. Your right lung is divided into three lobes or section. Each lung is like a balloon filled with sponge-like tissues. Air moves in and out through one opening, a branch of the bron bronchial tube. Your left lung is divided into two lobes. So Sky, how many parts your right lung is divided into? How many parts is your right lung divided into? Three. And how many parts is the, lung, is the left lung divided into? Two. Right? The pleura, pleura are, the two, are the two membranes, actually one continuous, one folded on itself that surround each lobe of the lung and separate your lungs from your chest wall. So it's like a it's like a covering over the lung. Like. Your bronchial tubes are lined with cilia, like very small hairs that move like waves. This motion carries mucus, which is the, you know, that thing when you cough, when you s it carries phlegm or, muc or liquid upward and out into your throat, where it is either coughed up or swallowed. We should not swallow it. Right, that is like you know, swallowing back um, waste. Right, they, they swallow it back, but you know, you should encourage them to spit. Right? Mucus catches and holds much of the dust, germs, and other unwanted matter that has invaded your lungs. You get rid of this matter when you cough, sneeze, clear your throat, or swallow. Right? And, and sometimes, if, especially when the children cough or when you cough, you should examine your, your mucus to see if there's blood in it, to see the color and things like that. You know, first, first, you know, when children used to cough and it comes up with that very bright yellow, they would say that it, the coal is ripe, right? Because it's, it's, it seems to be coming up more and it will have a brighter color than the regular coughing. Right, it's thicker. Right, because it's waste, so it has an off taste. All right, the small branches of the bronchial tubes are called bronchioles, at the end of which are the ear sacs or uh, alveoli. Alveoli, uh, alveoli. Thank you, Sky. <laughs> alveoli are the very small ear sacs where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Capil capillaries are blood vessels in the wall of the alveoli. Blood passes through the capillaries, entering through your pulmonary artery and leaving via your pulmonary vein. So you have an artery and a vein that runs <coughs> through the lungs that carries blood to and fro. While in the capillaries, blood gives off carbon dioxide through the capillary wall into the alve alveoli and takes up oxygen from air in the alveoli. So it's just giving you more details of how the exchange takes place. Now the muscles and, and bones of the respiratory system. Your diaphragm is a strong wall of muscle that separates your chest cavity from your abdominal cavity. By moving downward, it creates suction in the chest, drawing in air and expanding the lungs. The ribs. Ribs are bones that support and protect your chest cavity. They move slightly to help your lungs expand and contract. Now the skin. The skin does not breathe and exhale, but, but they also absorb oxygen. 
I'm reading from the book Helpful Living, The Physiology of the Respiratory System, the entire, sorry, the health of the entire system depends upon the healthy action of the respiratory organ. So if we eat the best food, but we are not exercising, our lungs are not functioning um, at optimum capacity, then we still will not be in optimum health because the respiratory system is not being taken care of. And these are some of the reasons why you hear pre persons will say that, you know, they're eating all the right thing, they're doing all this, but if we fall short in these little areas that we don't give attention to, then we will still be falling short of that health that God desires us to, to, um, to, to, to reach. Right, in order to have good blood, we must breathe well. So we must be breathing, we must be in an environment where the air is pure, but we also must be breathing well. We must breathe properly, right? We take short, short breaths, but we should be doing more deep breathing. Sister Manning. Sister Kadian, can you give us an illustration of what good breathing is? Right, so according to what they say, is you're to you're to you're to expand, you know, your abdominal area, and you take it in. No, no, so no, it's supposed to be out while you take it in. So it's when you let it out, your belly is to come in. Right, so it, it takes practice because we, we have, right, so you are to breathe, push, put it out. Right, and then to, to release, it would suck in at that time. Yes, um, I realized that we had it all wrong in recent times. I learned that that's a proper way to do it have the, the stomach out or the tummy area and uh, while you breathe in and as you exhale you that is a time when you would have it in because most time it is the opposite way we would have been doing it right we raise that we we take it from up here yeah. right we we take it from the chest instead of from from down below just and our posture must be correct to get it right, right as well. Just yesterday I was watching one of Sister Barbara's um, new video. It, the topic was on time. And she was discussing the importance of um, breathing. And she said not many persons breathe through their nose. So what other way, what other means, what, are, what other... We we can we really breathe Throw because you out. yes but you no, mentioned like if we have stuffy nose nostrils we then breathe through our mouth but all she has explained it is that um, we literally breathe do not breathe from our nostril and she was saying how oh, important it was because the cells need. That amount of right, of it, right, and a lot of persons become sick because of that deprivation. And uh, yes, right. So we have to practice to close our mouth more because we talk so much. So I guess our mouths are always open. So we are always breathing through our mouths. <laughs> but it's just to practice to breathe in and out through the nose. As I said, that the, the, the intake of air is better and it helps to, to, um, to vitalize the cells better that way. Um, I was saying that when I heard, I listened to um, the thing that Sister Manning referred to, I, I can see for me, um, because 
from I was a child coming up, I suffer with asthma. So many times I was always congested, so I, 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 I learned to breathe through my mouth. And so hearing that breathing through your nostril does such good for your body, I, I try. Many times I have, to, I have to be purposeful to breathe through my nostril. I remember even my stomach hurting and I tried deep breathing through my nostril and then the pain eased. So I'm just thinking that my, my body is not get this, getting sufficient oxygen as it should. Right, so we just have to try to incorporate deliberately doing deep breathing throughout the days and, and, and things like that, right. You have your hand up? All right, quick, quickly. Yeah, I think one of the exercises we could try for improving the lungs, muscles, and breathing is literally stopping your breath. For holding your breath, the longer you can hold it is the the more the lungs muscle tend to extract because it it is programmed to keep us alive. So it, it actually strengthens the muscles of the lungs. Okay, I've never heard about the stuff in the break, but I know um, Sister Barbara would have um, encouraged the high intensity exercises that helps to, to, because then you have to breathe, you have to breathe, so that's really um, encouraged the, the, the use of the lungs, all right? Your lungs deprived of air will be like a hunger person deprived of food. Indeed, we can live longer without food than without air, which is the food that God has provided for the lungs. The strength of the system is in a great degree dependent upon the amount of pure, fresh air breathed. If the lungs are restricted, the quality of oxygen received into them is also limited. The blood becomes vitiated and disease follows. So especially for women who love to wear the tight clothing that affects our, our, the health of our lungs. So causes of diseases in the respiratory organs. And all of this is coming from the book Healthful Living. Unhygienic surroundings. Many suffer decayed vegetable matter to remain about their premises. There is a constantly arising from these decaying substances and effluim, effluvium, effluvium that is poisoning the air. By inhaling the impure air, the blood is poisoned, the lungs become affected, and the whole system is diseased. So many persons are sick because the, the leaves and the, the trees around their houses and they don't clean them up. So it produces a poisonous um, you know, air that is inhaled by, by, the, by the system and causes disease. Also houses where water settles and bedrooms that remain damp. Another reason, poor ventilation. Many families suffer from sore throats, lung diseases, and liver complaints brought upon them by their own course of action. They keep their windows and doors closed, fearing they will take cold if there is a crevice to let in the air. They breathe the same air over and over until it becomes impregnated with the poisonous impurities and waste matter thrown off from their bodies, through the lungs, and from the pores of the skin. Improper breathing. Stomach, liver, lungs, and brain are suffering for want of deep, full inspirations of air, which would electrify the blood and impart to it a, a bright, lively color, and which alone can keep it pure and give tone and vigor to every part of the living machinery. And that is why you feel revived after exercising because you know, you're know you intaking more oxygen and the blood is now energized to do a more productive work. Improper use of the voice. Speaking from the throat, letting the words come out from the upper extremity of the vocal organs, all the time fretting and irritating them is not the best way to preserve health or to increase the efficiency of these organs. So even how to speak, we need to learn how to speak from you know, down in the abdominal cavity, rather than from up here, <laughs> right? Uh, many speak in a rapid way, that means fast, so we should 
not speak so fast and in a high and natural key so when the ministers are up here and they're shouting and they're barking and they're carrying on after to you hardly hear what they well not our ministers right brother Greaves you don't abuse your voice right because it, it, it you know it's something that is done and they don't they don't need to speak in that high pitch voice that won't bring conviction of heart they just need to speak in their regular voices you know not in a soft voice where we won't hear you but in a in a clear tone right but if they continue such a practice they will injure the th throat and lungs and as a result of continual abuse, the weak and inflamed organs will become diseased in a serious way and they will fall into consumption. Improper dress. The extremities are chilled, the heart fails in its effort, and the limbs become habitually cold, and the blood which is chilled away from the extremities is thrown back upon the lungs and brain, and inflammation and congestion of the lungs or the brain is the result. If the lungs and feet should have the extra coverings usually put up on the shoulder, lungs and heart, and health to circulation be induced to the extremities, the vital organs would act their part healthfully with only their share of clothing. The arms being naked exposes the infant to constant cold and congestion of lungs and our brain. These exposures prepare the way for the infant to become sickly and dwarfed. Thousands of females have ruined their constitutions and brought upon themselves various diseases in their effort to make a healthy and a natural form unhealthy and unnatural. Improper eating, catharal difficulties, catharal difficulties, kidney disease, headache, and heart troubles are the result of immoderate eating. Liquor, by the habitual use of sour cider many bring upon themselves permanent disease some die of consumption or fall under the power of apoplexy from this cause alone drugs every poisonous preparation in the vegetable and mineral kingdom taken into the system will leave some ill results i'm not seeing the rest of it but the result of taken into the system that which is not which is poisonous will uh, will cause um, issues. So how do we care for the respiratory system? According to the testimonies, exercise, morning exercise, walking in the free invigorating air of heaven or cultivating flowers, small fruits and vegetables is necessary to a healthful circulation of the blood. It is the surest safeguard against colds, coughs, congestion of the brain, inflammation of the liver, the kidneys, and the lungs, and a hundred other diseases. So one of the reasons why many of us might be sick is because we're not exercising, especially the morning exercise. A walk, even in winter, would be more beneficial to the health than all the medicine the doctors may prescribe. There will be increased vitality, which is so necessary to health. The lungs will, will have needful action for it is impossible to go out in the bracing air of a winter's morning without inflating the lungs. Fresh air. The strength of the system is in a great degree dependent upon the amount of pure air breathe. Um, this is from James White who wrote Health or How to Live. And James White James White wrote a lot about health. Respiration essentially consists in the interchanging of certain elementary principles contained in the blood for those contained in us as atmospheric air. The lungs and the skin form the medium through which this exchange is made. The skin is also an organ of respiration as the arterial blood flows out through the arteries into the capillary vessels which unite the arteries and veins, it then gives off a portion of its elements to the atmosphere. It gives off a portion of carbon in carbonic acid gas and receives a portion of oxygen from the surrounding air. It also transmits 
electrical influences which communicate between the body and the atmosphere. The healthful condition and action of the skin is greatly essential to health. Bad ear will have its influence. Miasmatic influences take advantage of the fact that the skin holds in a great degree the destiny of the body. The, sorry, if the action of the skin be retarded by having its pores and capillaries obstructed, there will at once be disturbance throughout the whole system. And I guess when we look at this, the, you know, the, the look at the skin in more details, we will see how important our skin is and how important bathing is. The lungs too hold a close sympathy with the action of the skin. The whole system feels when the skin suffers. Hence, the importance to be attached to keeping the pores unclogged by suitable washing and unembarrassed by wrong sleeping arrangements. There should be needful bathing, but not excessive. The pores kept open, but not stimulated beyond their due action. An entire abstinence from the falls and hurtful luxury of feather beds. So back in the days, they have these thing for feather beds that were injurious to health. So we see where the skin is also a part of the respiratory system and how we care for it affects, you know, how the body is vitalized by oxygen. Excessive bathing. I guess persons who every minute they're bathing because then you will be irritating the skin, you will be getting rid of the natural oils and those things, yeah, I guess. If it's mentioned then there, then yes. And maybe it's also speaking about how we bathe, you know, we, and with the, 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 the injurious soaps and things that strips away the natural oil and the protective barrier and all of those things, so. No, we must bathe. <laughs> we must bathe. It's a needful bathing, but not excessive. I think if we meditate upon it, we will understand what it means by excessive. All right? So give me some type of respiratory ailments. Quickly. Asthma. Asthma bronchitis. Tuberculosis. 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 Sounds like I'm pronouncing it wrong. DD, a type of respiratory ailment. Yeah, the common cold. Cancer of the lungs. Yes, Nivea. Flu. DD. Okay, Nathan, give DD one. Sinus. Yeah, it's sinusitis. All right. Any more? Okay. All right, thank you. So breaking them down into different categories, we have breathing issues, like postnatal drip. The, this is the accumulation of mucus in the back of the throat, which can cause a feeling of congestion, a sore throat, or a cough. So you don't have a cold or anything, you're just, you're just feeling congested and have a sore throat or that. Remedy, blow your nose regularly but gently. And you can also do a nas nasal flush three to five times daily. You can gargle with warm salt water or use a humidifier. Croup, croup, croup. A disease that causes swelling in the airways and problems breathing. The remedy, increase lukewarm, sorry, increase lukewarm water intake. So you, you, you know, you can sip on the warm tea or sip on the warm lemon water. All right, drink as much after each cough can use a vaporizer, keep warm. You can drink tea from echinacea, fenugreek, thyme, warm vegetable soup. You can do fermentation on the chest, hot onion poultice on the chest, and you can also drink tomato juice. Asthma. But before we, we know that before we attempt to do any treatment, we must find out the cause and all of that, right? Asthma, a condition in which your airways narrow and swell and may produce extra mucus. This can make breathing difficult and trigger coughing, a whistling sound, which is known as wheezing, when you breathe out and shortness of breath. Remedy, be calm, pray, sit upright for 10 minutes, deep breathe in and out through your nose, 
and then you can lay on your stomach and continue to, to do breathing control. Hot fomentation on the back of the neck, the thorax and chest. You can also pour cold water on the back of the neck, you know, from a distance. <coughs> you can use a vaporizer, garlic water, sip on garlic water, eat an onion, chew on an onion, um, drink hot tea every hour or so. And one thing that is good for asthma as well is leaf alive. It's very good for um, asthma. Asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. Thank you, Amar. Amir. When your body doesn't get enough oxygen, it affects how you breathe. It may cause you to pass out. It can also cause death. Other names for asphyxiation includes asphyxia and suffocation. The remedy, plunge the person into cold water. It will you know, help them, it will shock them and help them to start breathing, start breathing, or pour cold water on the person, and then you can do other means of resuscita resuscitation, resuscitation. Pardon me with my pronunciation. Bronchial tubes, is. <laughs> All right, bronchitis, when the airways lead into your lungs, the trachea and the bronchi get inflamed and fill with mucus. You get a nagging cough as your body tries to get rid of the mucus. Your cough can last two or more weeks. You may also experience pain in the chest, shortness of breath, fever, sore throat. The remedy, an yeast tea with almond milk, lots of water, warm soups, and you sip your tea. <coughs> sip warm tea. Cayenne pepper is also beneficial, your vaporizer. Um, you need to get rest. You need to get rest is very important. You need to do deep breathing. Heating compress on the chest at night. Warm compress on the chest in the day. Hot foot bath. Encourage a person to cough because you want them to expel the mucus. Right? And keep warm and also steam inhalation will help. Bronchi. Bronchi estasis. All right. A long-term condition where the airway of the lungs become widened, leading to a buildup of excess mucus that can make the lungs more vulnerable to infection. Chronic cough, which may have blood. So the remedy, similar to that of the bronchitis, technique of deep breathing, coughing, and holding your breath. I guess that's what Brother, um, Brother Stores was explaining, that in, it's called breathing control where you take control of your breathing, right? Drinking cupous amount of water, that means you're going to drink as much water as you can because you're helping to, to um, dilute and expel, right? Vaporizer, loose clothing, but also warm clothing, right? So you have pneumonia, also known as lung fever, an infection that inflames the air sac in one or both lungs. The air sac may fill with fluid, or pus, causing cough with phlegm, or, or pus, fever, chills, and difficulty breathing, sore throat, blood in your phlegm, blood in your mucus when you spit it out, engage, sorry, enlarged lymph nodes in the neck, pain in the chest, rapid and difficult breathing, kyanosis, which is when the skin becomes, starts to become blue because of lack of oxygen. The remedy, same treatment as the bronchitis, which much rest and intensified care. So the, the pneumonia is a little more serious than the bronchitis. Right, Sister Desia? Right, it's much more um, serious. So rinse the nose with, wa with salt water, gently taking it in and blowing it out. Gargle with warm salt water. Then you can gargle also with golden seal and myrrh, hot foot baths, high enema, laxative herbs, liquid fast for the first few days so you just want the person to be drinking right especially because you want to take the pressure of the digest you want to take the not only the pressure but you want to take the, the, the um you want to give the body rest so the body don't have to be focusing on digesting the food but be focusing on getting the problem resolved in the respiratory system um, primarily let them drink citrus
citrus and pineapple juice, lemon water, then you know, as they progress, you can give them strained vegetable broth, and uh, as they progress more, you can include chewable whole greens, something that you can chew on. Steam inhalation for 15 minutes every hour, fermentation for 15 minutes every two hours, followed by heating compress. If persons become bluish, short hot bath, pour cold water over their head, spine and chest, rub vigorously, and use, sorry, and wrap them to keep them warm. Allow them to rest, or if you, you know, if they're not able to get the hot bath, you can put a cold, a hot blanket, sorry, a hot blanket around them for 15 minutes, followed by the cold mitten friction. Anybody remember what the cold mitten friction is? Right, it's when you just rub the skin with a cold rug vigorously. Because you're trying to stimulate um, the white blood cells and also encourage circulation. All right, tuberculosis, also known as consumption. A contagious infection that usually attacks your lungs, also known as the white death. Its symptoms are coughing, which increases and produces more phlegm, general fatigue, loss of appetite, chest pain, night sweats, low-grade fever. The person loses weight and may cough up blood. So it's good to be able to differentiate between the different respiratory systems so you can know how serious it is and what, what um, measure to take. In, in all of them, the treatment is similar, if you notice, but in some cases, in some of them, you have to do a little bit more, right, based on the intensity of it. So the remedy, um, fast, right, rest, you know, good food to strengthen the strengthen and build up. So for a period of time, you let them fast and give them liquid food, right? And then as they progress, because they are losing weight, you want to give them something to build up back. And because of the fatigue, you want to give them something that will strengthen them. Fresh air. Fresh air is very important for tuberculosis. And I think that's one of the reasons why many persons would die from it, because they have them locked up. You know, when you have tuberculosis, you're isolated, right? And they have you locked up in a room. So I think that's the reason why many persons die from it. Because they are deprived of what? The fresh air. And the fresh air is a cure. They're not... The agenda is not... Right. Um, so flush or bury your spit because it's a, it's a disease that is... It's an ailment that is contagious, so you want to, you know, spit or bury. Cold bath twice daily with one very short heat bath. Keep warm. Um, very hot. Sorry. All right, so you do the cold baths only if there is no bleeding or threat of bleeding. So if the person is coughing up blood or so, don't put them in the cold bath. Right, you'll do the warm bath then. Fomentation to spine between shoulders if congested or bleeding with ice packs on chest and hands, keeping legs warm. Monitor and treat the fever. So tuberculosis is a very serious one. Emphysema, a lung disease that damages the alveoli in your lungs. It is only with great effort that the person can exhale air from his lungs. There is continual breathlessness. Most any exertion brings coughing. So if they move or so, you know, they start to cough. It's hard for them. So you have to be very gentle with, with them. It is hard to breathe in, but worse to breathe out. The neck veins often stands out from the effort, and he breathes through the mouth in order to try to get enough air in and out. Breathing is usually rapid and short. He may breathe 25 to 30 times a minute and still not get enough air. Eventually, his chest becomes barrel shaped, his face ruddy, and he speaks with short, broken phases, phrases. So, the remedy is stop smoking. This is the result of smoking primarily. Avoid sprays, you know, perfume and those things. Avoid allergens. Walk outside, do up, upper body resistant exercise because it's trying to strengthen the lungs. 
They were fast, eat less and simple, avoid gas causing food, sip warm teas in the morning, maintain ideal body weight, avoid constipation, breathe correctly, cough correctly, avoid stress and heavy loads, elevate the foot of your bed but not too high. Alright. Alright. Pluricity. Pluricy. Pluricy. A condition whereby information of the pleura causes the membranes to rub and grate against each other, causing severe pain and sound. Pain is severe upon taking quick breaths, cough or sneeze. Common causes of pleurisy include bacterial and viral infection which can lead to pneumonia. Other causes include a pulmonary embolus, cancer, trauma to the chest wall. Caused by not taking care of oneself, not eating well, not getting enough sleep, and you're stressed or overworked. Remedy, rest in bed, keep warm, give a high enema, apply fomentation to the chest and upper back, rest and repeat until the pain is relieved. Apply tight compress the lungs to limit movements because it's aggravated when you move. Keep on hot water bottles to prevent chest from getting cold. Give hot tea from the um, pleurisy root, yarrow, val valerian, skullcap, cayenne. Give only fruits, oatmeal water, vegetables, and whole grain. Move first gently and carefully. Give fluids, but not too much during a crisis. All right, Qatar, Qatar. The excess mucus which occurs with many different nasal, nas nasal throat, tracheal, bronchial infection. For example, croup and whooping cough, runny nose, headaches, post-nasal drip, sore throat, sinusitis, gastritis, glue air syndrome and respiratory problems. Avoid high mucus forming food, eat mostly raw foods, mainly fresh fruits and vegetables, avoid allergens and irritants, steam inhalation, eucalyptus oil, increase water intake, aloe vera, ginger, cascara, kelp, comfrey, those are some things that will help. Oregano, the common cold, Right, the common cold, general information of the mucous membranes and of the respiratory passage. Symptoms include nose and throat irritations, watery eyes, fever, headaches, chills, mucus, sorry, muscle aches, and temporary loss of smell and teeth. Remedy, take only fruit and vegetable juices when fever is present, as much vitamin C, carrot juice, small amount of garlic, Increased water, potato skin broth with protein after the crisis subsides. So after they start to get better, you can give them some broth. Stay warm. You can make tea from mint, chamomile, ginger, eucalyptus. Be cheerful. Get fresh air. Gargle three times daily with warm salt water. Take hot bath. Hot shower. Hot mustard, foot bath, Epsom salt, and those things. And we know that the flu is similar, but just a little more intense. We have coughing, people may cough for different reasons. We have lung cancer that can produce a cough. So most of the times persons who have lung cancer, they will have a cough. All right, so um, for next week, we will be looking at COVID before we move on to our next, um, our next system of the body. And so quickly, um, who wants to do a demonstration for me? Just showing you some of the things that we have for the respiratory system. We have honey, cayenne, oil of oregano is very good, mullein leaf. We have, what's this? Yeah, it's to give the nasal flush. Right, we have echinacea. We have thyme. You know, thyme is very good for any respiratory ailments. You just dry it. Even a scallion is also good, right? We have, what's this? French thyme. We have mental crystal that's used for your steam inhalation. It's very good. We have pineapple. 
vitamin C. We have a sour orange, our citrus, tomato, good for the coughing. We have our flu bomb ingredients, onion, garlic, ginger, turmeric, honey, cayenne. We have our oximeter to test, ox test your oxygen level. We have charcoal to help get rid of some of the toxin from the body. And so brother, um, brother Stuart, come and do a, 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 a come, and, come and show us a remedy that you would use for your daughter. We also have this, a sweater because we need to keep warm, especially when we are going through a respiratory ailment. All right, we have our towel to do our fermentation and our socks. We also have our, our bath to do our foot bath. Right, so brother, which one of these would you use? I know Shamaya has a cold right now. Which one would you use? You're going to demonstrate a remedy for your daughter quickly. You have to quickly. You go put cayenne on the baby. The baby can manage cayenne. Okay, what will you be making? Oh, uh, it's just basically a syrup with the the honey.
So whatever whatever bush we know that work work against coal. Amen, amen, thank you. So we will close out now here. Brother Stuart will pray for us as we close out until next week. All right, All right let us pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, we want to give you thanks for this day. We thank you for your natural remedies that we can use, which we are sure will get rid of whatever ailments we might have and is sure not to leave any side effects. We thank you for the minds that you have put out to have guidance to guide us to these things. And we pray that each and every person who may need this would consult you first for guidance for these and other.